That Extraordinary Pig of Paris, a story by Ronnie Shutter and Dominic Catalano. As everyone knows, the people of Paris love to eat, and Monsieur Cuchon, though a pig, was no exception. He was a pig du Paris, and from the tips of his ears to the clefts in his feet, proud of it. Early in the morning, Monsieur Cuchon loved to stroll the broad boulevards and wander the narrow lanes of Paris, allowing his snout to lead him over forward to the bakery lined with long brown arms of freshly baked bread, through the market piled high with cool crisp vegetables, onto the crepe maker to sniff the scent of his sugared pancakes, then a pause along the scene to clear his nose trills, and at last, when he could stand it no longer, to the brasserie for lunch. Six mixed salad and a plate of truffles, Mushu Kushon would command, his tail curling with pleasure, or if there was a slight chill in the air, two or three bowls of tangy onion soup. Around him sat the people of Paris, talking, reading their journals, and dining on rabbit or chicken or some other poor animal's flesh. Monsieur Cochon always nodded politely to them and then shifted his gaze in another direction. For the truth was, the sight of his fellow animals cooked in sauce and sat with a sprig of parsley on a plate was more than he could bear. Monsieur Cochon, you see, was a vegetarian, refusing to eat any and all meats. Now, to be a vegetarian in Paris is an unusual thing. To be a pig in Paris is a dangerous thing. Monsieur Cochon crossed his legs. He was thinking of his feet. In Paris, in fact, in all of France, they were considered a delicacy, breaded or cooked in jelly. Monsieur Cochon withdrew his pocket watch and glanced at it for reassurance. Engraved on the back were the words, Prudent Pig. It was true, he was careful, ever on the alert for danger, avoiding all butcher shops, but most especially those shops called charcuteries. Shops like the one across the street owned by evil Monsieur de Copé and his assistant Henri Lafemme. For it was in places such as this that pigs could be found only on platters, turned into terrines, pâté, and sausages. Putting on a bit of weight, are you, Monsieur Cochon? De Coupé would call out from his doorway. Very becoming, he'd snicker. Then he'd lick his fat, greasy lips, green at Henry Lafemme, and disappear into his terrible shop. Just thinking of it made Monsieur Cochon shudder. He ordered a café and pastry to calm his nerves. Then he stared into his coffee and considered his fate. Would his life end on an oven rock? Should he run away? No use. Why, it was rumored that, even as far away as America, young boys and girls enjoyed sandwiches of boiled ham and cheese for lunch. No, Mushu Kushon concluded, life lived without risk was not worth living. With the threat of a curving knife at your back or a frying pan at your belly, you appreciated every moment and never took life for granted. Rising from his chair, Mushu Kushon packeted the remains of his pastry and a few cubes of sugar along with a thick crust of bread and turned his dark thoughts to the sunlit afternoon. Madame Sparrow and her family serenaded him from a chestnut tree. Mushu Cushon broke off a piece of pastry and crumbled it onto the ground in tribute. The pigeons leaning over to sip water from the gutter were his friends. Mushu Cushon cast his bread upon their waters. The horse carrying an officer of the law, though unknown to him, was a fellow mortal, so he stroked his mane and offered him a sugar cube. Madame Lon, a donkey with whom he'd long been acquainted, brayed at him from her place on the square where she sold flowers from baskets strapped to her back. <coughs> Monsieur Cochon saluted her, purchased a small sprig of lavender, and placed it in his lapel. Full, happy, and overwhelmed with what the French call joie de vivre, Monsieur Cochon decided to walk off his meal with a lively pace prominent. No dinner tonight, he thought, for even a pig must watch his waistline. 
He shivered as he recalled Monsieur de Copé's greasy lips and Henri Lafamme's threatening glances. Crossing the river, he jogged briskly through the gardens of the Tuileries and trotted down to the quay by the pet stores, where animals imprisoned in cages waited to be sold. All of a sudden, Monsieur Cochon was seized with an uncontrollable urge. While the pet shop owners turned their backs to argue the day's events, Mushu Cushon carefully brushed the latch on a cat's cage, slipped the hooks on the chicken coops, and freed a family of ducks. Winking at an old bearded goat, he untied his rope, then unleashed a dog. At your service, Mushu Cushon said under his breath to the grateful animals, and then, like a French Robin Hood, he disappeared silently down the quay. In bed that night, hungry Monsieur Cushon lay awake admiring the decorative molding on his ceiling. It reminded him of the cakes in the window of the pastry shop across the street from Monsieur de Copé's store. Monsieur Cushon had only dared to view the cakes from afar, but even from a distance he could see that they were works of art. Monsieur Cushon rolled over and arranged himself in his sleep position. His thick black lashes closed and he began to dream. Mocha, he sighed, then chocolate. Moshu Kushong startled awake. He had drooled on his pillow. Moshu Kushong adjusted his head and fell back asleep, dreaming fitfully of macaroons. Early the next morning, Moshu Kushong awakened with one thought in his mind. I have been good, he said, patting his waistline and admiring the way his breeches fell loosely about his legs. I would like a bit of cake, perhaps an entire cake. Yes, today I will have cake. Quickly arranging his beret on his head, Mushu Kushong hurried out of his apartment. The vision of cake quickened his pace until he was rushing up one street, down another, then round the corner to a spot just across the way from the pastry shop run by Mademoiselle Lou Sucre one of the best bakers in all of Paris. Here he came to an abrupt halt. Prudent pig that he was, he dared not cross the street for fear of Monsieur de Copé, who even now was inside arranging his frightful wares for the long day ahead. A billowing gray cloud swept across the Parisian sky. A breeze blew up and sent old newspapers sailing in Monsieur Cushon's direction and with them the smell of cake. Moshu Kushong stepped out into the street to better identify the other. Praline, he cried out in ecstasy, with a hint of almond. Mademoiselle Le Sucre's cake seemed larger now. Moshu Kushong could see the details of its perfect sample. The graceful swirls of a mocha batter cream, the delicate shavings of chocolate crowning a gâteau opera, the pleasing design the apple slices made circling a tart of pomme. Abandoning reason, forgetting the words prudent pig, Mushu Kushong was impelled toward the pastry shop window by a force greater than himself. Must have cake, he cried out. Need cake, he heard himself shout. The pig in him was all-powerful now. Panting, snorting, and salivating, he pressed his snout against the glass of the pastry shop window. Inside, Mademoiselle Le Sucre motioned to him, but she was not beckoning. On the contrary, she seemed to be waving him away. She was pointing not to him, but to a place just over his shoulder. Mushu Kushon turned his head to discover what the matter was, when suddenly all was darkness. Had he fainted? No, he thought. The darkness was too great. He was dead, but why then could he still smell cake? Mushu Kushon felt someone grab hold of his feet. The darkness crinkled around him, and he toppled thunderously to the ground. Voila! A frightening and familiar voice exclaimed. It was Mushu de Copé, unmistakably, and the high stupid laugh belonged without a doubt to Henry Lafont. <laughs> what foolishness! Mushu Kushon had no one but himself to blame. How weak and fleeting common sense was! How easily it could be laid low by a passion for cake. Then, as suddenly as it had been taken away, light and Paris were restored to his sight. Henry Lafamme had removed what turned out to be a paper bag from his head. Monsieur Cushon lay on the ground, and before him stood his two mortal enemies. Enfant! Decopé cried, licking his greasy lips. 
Finally, the day of glory has arrived. At last, you are ours. You succulent piece of pork. You juicy bit of shambong. Mushuku Shung trembled. A moment ago, he'd been dead, he thought, and sudden death with the ever-present smell of cake had not been so terrible. But death at the sweaty hands of Mushu de Cope and Henry Lafomme was another matter. Mushuku Shung glanced down at his feet. They were bound together with a length of twine, and now Henry Lafomme was attempting to tie up the rest of him. Mushuku Shung squirmed and twisted, trying in vain to free himself. Calm yourself, you beautiful bit of bacon, Decopé said. No point in getting into a state. Henry will simply attach a hook to the twine at your feet and hoist you up with a pulley. In short order, you will be hanging by your feet, ready to be cured forever of your troubles. At this dreadful joke, Henry Lafond dissolved into gales of stupid laughter. <laughs> Mushu Kushung tried not to panic, but it was impossible. True to De Copé's word, in a minute or two, Mushu Kushung was hanging upside down in plain view of all passers-by. His beret tumbled to the ground. Mushu Kushung could not control himself. He squealed in humiliation. Henry! De Copé called out. Go into the alley! Get the curving knife! Mushu Kushung was frightened now, so much so that he didn't notice a sudden darkening of the sky, failed to hear the strange fluttering sound off in the distance, never realized that something quite extraordinary was taking place in the city of Paris. For witness to the scene of horror and defeat was Madame Sparrow, who happened to be perched with her friends atop the lamp post in front of Mademoiselle Le Sucre's shop, hoping to catch a crumb or two from the people who passed in and out of the pastry shop. Madame Sparrow, the very same who only yesterday had serenaded Mushu Kushung, to whom he had given a taste of his pastry. At the sight of Mushu Kushung's condition, she and her friends had flown off to their friends, the pigeons, the very same with whom Mushu Kushung had shared his bread, and they to Madame Lon, and she had trotted off to the chickens he had freed, and they to the docks, and on and on, until before long, hordes of animals were converging on the scene. <laughs> In the alley, Henry Lafomme had just reached for the carving knife when a squadron of sparrows led by Madame circled around his head and landed information along his arm. Shoo! He cried out, trying to wave them off, but the sparrows, used to balancing on the windy, wavy branches of trees, clung to his sleeve with little effort, chirping loudly. Henry! Mushu de Copé bellowed. What's that noise? He glanced at Mushu Kushung, who had lost some of his color. Hurry with the knife! Our friend here is looking pale! But Henry Lafomme was too busy with other matters to obey de Copé. From out of nowhere, a battalion of chickens surrounded him, clucking and scratching at his legs. <laughs> Together with the sparrows, the sound they made was truly maddening. Shut up! Henry Lafomme shouted at them. Shut up! Mushu de Copé exclaimed in disbelief. You speak to me, your boss, the owner of a respected establishment, comme ça, like that? You ungrateful fool, you! De Copé never finished his sentence, for just then a pigeon landed on his head, another on his right shoulder, and one more on his left. Mushu de Copé stood stock still like a statue in the park. Henry! He shrieked. Out of the alleyway, Henry Lafomme finally came, running at top speed, pursued in the air by the birds, on land by the chickens, and now at his heels by a brigade of ducks. What's going on? What is this? De Copé cried out. He wriggled his shoulders and shook his head to free himself of the pigeons. But no sooner had he succeeded than they landed again, the one on his head pecking at his hair. Go away! De Coupe screamed. But now he was surrounded by three hissing cats. <coughs> and half a dozen dogs. <coughs> 
who nip at his heels and jump up trying to bite his hands. It's a conspiracy, Mushu de Coupe announced. The pig is having his way with us. Get him! De Coupe called to his assistant. As strong as he was stupid, Henry Lafon managed to make his way toward Mushu Kushong. With great difficulty, he raised his arm, still covered with birds, and advanced toward Mushu Kushong. Prepare to die, he called out. Mushu Kushong shuddered and bravely closed his eyes. But before La Femme could do his dirty deed, from out of nowhere, the old bearded goat Mushu Kushong had untied the day before appeared. Sneaking up behind Henry La Femme, he backed up, bent down, and butted. The knife tumbled from La Femme's hand, and he flew through the air and landed at the door of Mademoiselle Le Sucre's shop, where, with her heaviest pie plate, she hit him full upon the head and knocked him unconscious. It was exactly at this moment that Madame Lon, unnoticed in all the commotion, stepped behind Monsieur de Copé and proudly delivered the greatest kick of her life, aimed precisely at the center of de Copé's derriere. Up he sailed, somersaulting beautifully through the air, landing right next to his stupid assistant. The crowd of spectators who had assembled to witness this amazing event cheered. Attention! An official sounding voice rang out. Make way! Another called. The cats, dogs, chickens, ducks, pigeons, sparrows, and people all cleared away. Madame Lon and the old goat step aside. Two uniformed officers of the law arrived. One of them read from a paper. Monsieur Antoine de Copé, he shouted. Please step forward. De Copé staggered to his feet and saluted. Henry Lafon, rise! De Copé leaned over and slapped his assistant awake, and he too managed to stand. This pig, the officer said, sounding angry about to be butchered out in the open air on the very streets of our city. This pig, Monsieur, have you a license? License, Henry Lafemme repeated stupidly. Monsieur de Copé was unable to answer. He was suddenly seized with a terrible coughing spell. <coughs> As I suspected, the official declared, and so. His words were simple and to Monsieur Cochon's ears, Fortunately, still part of his head beautiful, for attempting to kill an animal without a proper license to butcher. You are both, according to the law of France, 24th of July, 1881, under arrest. The crowd went wild. Such clucking, quacking, chirping, cheering, barking and braying had never been before heard in the streets of Paris. <laughs> Why, as far away as London, people stopped to wonder at the sound. The officer picked up the carving knife, cut Monsieur Cochon's ropes, and freed him. Vive la loi! Long live the law! Vive la France! Long live France! The people shouted. Vive le Cochon! Long live the pig! Mademoiselle Le Socouré cried. Monsieur Cochon blushed at this tribute. His wonderful rosy color now completely restored. He humbly bowed to the crowd. Are you all right, Monsieur Cushon? Madame Lon asked him. Yes, yes, I'm fine, he assured her. Only, perhaps, a tiny bit hungry? Hi, if you like this video, please give this a like and hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified whenever I release a new video.